Welcome guys. Uh, welcome to Minkler's Corner. Uh, this is another video I'm, I'm about to do. This is um, Napoleon's first victory, the Siege of Toulon. It was requested uh, that I start doing reactions on Napoleon by Epic History TV. Go watch them out. They're amazing reactions now. There's a, a little caveat. I haven't watched this video, but I've watched all the uh, Napoleonic uh, uh, videos from Epic History TV. I watched the Marshalls, I watched the parts 1 through 6. I don't remember if I watched the, the, the other parts when he comes back from Russia, but I know the history pretty well. And I'm going to react to it because I want to give my opinion on it and I want to, you know, have a discussion about it. But just keep in mind, I, I reacted to mostly on my own personal time, by the way. I, I haven't reacted to it on camera. This is going to be the first time, but I know pretty much what's going on. You know, uh, I'm going to finish the series on the Swiss Canal, don't worry about it, but this uh, was just recommended, uh, and I want to watch it, or at least react to it. In the summer of 1793, the French Revolution was entering its fourth year, and France was on the verge of anarchy. In Paris, political extremists had seized control of the revolution. They guillotined the king and imposed a reign of terror that dealt summary justice to all suspected enemies of the revolution. Hoping to unify the new republic, France's leaders had declared war on the Habsburg Empire. But the conflict quickly widened and soon France was facing the combined might of Europe's leading powers, oh, the fuck determined to stamp Christ. out a dangerous play, political experiment. If you play as France in Victoria too, with, Meanwhile, in whole regions of France had come that? out in open revolt, horrified by the new <laughs> extremism of the revolution. And then ten years later... Okay. In August, the Republic suffered a further, potentially fatal blow, when the city of Toulon joined the revolt. Toulon was France's largest and most important naval base in the south, home to a third of the entire French navy. But now, rebels welcomed their old enemy, the British Royal Navy, into the port, led by Admiral Lord Hood, aboard HMS Victory. What a it was an extraordinary coup. Without a shot being fired, the Allies had crippled French naval power in the Mediterranean and gained a vital toehold on the French coast. All French forces in the area were immediately diverted to face this new threat and lay siege to the rebel port. 19,000 troops in all, but since most French officers had been aristocrats who were now fleeing the revolution in large numbers, they were seriously short of professional leadership. Their commander, General Jean-Francois Carteau, was a loyal Republican, but a court painter by trade, with no military training. <laughs> to make matters worse, one of his few professional officers, his artillery commander, Colonel Don Martin, had been badly wounded on the approach to Toulon. Antoine Salicetti, a Corsican deputy of the National Convention in Paris, recommended as his replacement a fellow countryman, a 24-year-old artillery officer <laughs> who was passing Toulon en route to the front, named Napoleone Buonaparte, yeah. or Bonaparte. Bonaparte was a professional soldier, but he'd seen almost no active service. Nevertheless, Salicetti was impressed by his manner, and most of all, his politics. Bonaparte had just written a political pamphlet, a short story about a young artillery officer who berates his fellow diners for their disloyalty to the Republic. General Carteau thought it wise to accept Deputy Salicetti's recommendation. Good quote. That's a great quote. The great port of Toulon was well defended by city walls, 
and a dozen outlying forts and redoubts. They were held by 2,000 British soldiers and sailors, 6,000 Spanish troops, 6,000 Neapolitans, and 800 Sardinians. So they were 15,000? Artillery would I be the key fighting. to overcoming these formidable defences. But when Bonaparte was put in command of the artillery on the 16th of September, he found himself with few cannon, not enough trained gun crews, and a shortage of gunpowder and shot. With relentless energy and determination, Bonaparte transformed the situation, requisitioning unused guns, training infantrymen to work them, setting up a new forge and workshop, and arranging transport from Marseille of 100,000 sandbags for constructing new batteries. Through hard work, he was ultimately able to build his force up to 64 officers and 1,500 men, manning 100 cannon, howitzers and mortars. Within days, Bonaparte had established two new forward batteries, with good revolutionary names, La Montagne and Sans Culottes, which brought Toulon's inner harbour within range, and forced Admiral Hood to move all his ships closer to the port. Bonaparte also came up with a plan that would allow the French to bypass most of Toulon's defences and secure the rapid victory the Republic so desperately needed. Bonaparte argued that if Fort Leguilette could be captured, which looked out across the harbour, he could fill it with heavy guns and shell the British and Spanish fleet at anchor. Admiral Hood would be forced to abandon the port and take with him the Allied soldiers that Toulon relied on for its defence. Small, small pause. Uh, is this Admiral Hood the same, um, uh, the namesake of the ship that I think sunk in the Second World War that fought uh, the Bismarck? Just small question. General Carteau saw the merits of Bonaparte's plan, and on the 22nd of September, French forces attacked Montcaire. Mm. But to Bonaparte's exasperation, while he'd argued for an attack by 3,000 men, the indecisive Carteau committed only 400. Right. So Not only was the attack easily repulsed, but it alerted the Allies to the danger. Yeah. Within 48 hours, they'd reinforced Montcair with thousands more troops and built a new fort named Fort Mulgrave, bristling with 20 cannon. Mm. The position was now so strong, the French nicknamed it Little Gibraltar. Finally, in mid-November, an experienced professional soldier arrived to take command of French forces, General Dugomier. He saw at once that Bonaparte's plan was the only way to take Toulon, and gave it his full backing. Bonaparte, promoted to major, got to work, overseeing construction of several more batteries in preparation for the decisive assault. One forward battery was so exposed to enemy fire that men refused to be sent there. So Bonaparte renamed it La Batterie des Hommes Sans Peur, the Battery of Men Without Fear. And suddenly, there was no shortage of volunteers. It was an early display of Napoleon's genius for inspiring his soldiers. One that would serve him well in the years ahead. On the 30th of November, the Allied Land Forces commander, British General Charles O'Hara, tried to seize back the initiative, leading an assault on the new French batteries facing Fort Malbusquet. At first the attack was successful. The batteries were overrun, and the French guns spiked. But a counter-attack with much greater numbers and led in person by General Dugomier and Major Bonaparte, drove back the Allies. Mm. 
General O'Hara himself was shot through the hand and captured. Twelve years before, he'd surrendered to George Washington at Yorktown during the American War of Independence. Now, he got to surrender to Napoleon Bonaparte. <laughs> the way you said that, it's so funny. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Pause. Among those who most distinguished themselves in peace and most happy rallying, the men leading and forward were citizen Bonaparte, commandant of the artillery. In the early hours of the 18th of December, in howling wind and driving rain, the French launched a major assault on Fort Mulgrave. The wet conditions made muskets useless, except as clubs or with bayonets. Bonaparte led the second wave in person. Amid fierce hand-to-hand -hand fighting, his horse was killed under him, and he was bayoneted in the thigh by a British sergeant, a wound that came within inches of ending his life radically changing the course of history. That's what I'm talking about, man. You know, the guy, you know, the guy bayonets him in the artery, on the thigh, a little bit higher, and the whole of history changes. The same with Hitler. If he died in the trenches in the First World War, dude, one event can change decades of history, in this case uh, uh, as well. What the hell? Finally, the Allied garrison was overwhelmed, and Mulgrave fell to the French. Fort Leguilette and Tour de la Balakière were soon also in French hands. By the following afternoon, the French had ten heavy guns in Leguilette, placing the Allied ships within range. Admiral Hood could not expose his valuable ships of the line to such a threat. So he, he had no option but to order an immediate evacuation of the fleet and garrison from Toulon. Small Spanish and British teams raced to destroy all the French ships and naval stores that they couldn't take with them. But amid the chaos of their departure, 18 ships of the line were allowed to fall back into French hands. A badly missed opportunity. Many French citizens of Toulon were desperate to escape aboard the Allied ships, knowing that the Republicans would inflict terrible reprisals on the city. British and Spanish ships took as many as they could, about 14,000 in all. But scores oh, were drowned there was one amid chaotic and desperate scenes. Yeah, of course. Others were left to face the wrath of the revolution. Republican troops entered the city the next morning, Good and job. executions and firing squads began almost immediately. <sighs> For the next two weeks, about 200 were executed every day. Allied propaganda later blamed Bonaparte for the atrocities, but there's no evidence he was directly involved. My predictions were exactly fulfilled since just in the history of this event which so greatly astonished Europe and has ever been well history. 200 a day? France's young republic was now fighting back on How all fronts. Was the war and with the fall the of Toulon, the Allies had lost a golden opportunity, a chance to stir up further revolt, deal a lasting blow to French naval power, perhaps even overturn the revolution. But instead, the French Republic had weathered one of its greatest storms. In no small part, thanks to the remarkable judgment, energy and courage of one 24-year-old artillery Dude, officer, a 24 -year -old man. now promoted Brigadier General in recognition of his extraordinary service at Toulon. What the fuck? Napoleon Bonaparte had taken his first step on the path to greatness. I mean... And for Europe, 21 years of almost constant war awaited. 
Oh, spot. Jesus H. Christ. Can you imagine? First of all, the guy's 24. Let's just put it out there. You know? And then he solves the whole... Uh, he, he gives the plan that is successful in taking over the city. Or taking back the city. How the hell did France survive in the first place? It was surrounded by Spain, Austria, Sardinia, Prussia, the Netherlands, the UK. I mean, what the fuck? How the hell did they win and become the master of Europe? Or at least Napoleon did. I mean, it's... That's why it's, this is so interesting. This is insane how brilliant it is. Now... I, uh, I want to say to you guys that, uh, uh, so, yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, this was my, uh, my reaction to Napoleon's first victory. I'll do the second one, uh, someday soon. See you guys there.